be fun. Welcome everyone to Garden City, Idaho. We're here at Cinder Winery. We are so happy that you're going to be joining us today to taste some wine. I'm Joe Schnur and I am joined today by my lovely wife and our head winemaker, Melanie Krause. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. This is gonna be fun. Yes. Melanie, do you believe that this is our 13th annual barrel tasting? Mm. For 13 years, we've been no. doing uh, barrel tastings here where we invite the community in and our wine club into the building and we taste barrel samples and we talk about the soon to be released vintages. But this is a little bit of a change this year. Yeah, first time we've done it on film, but I do have a record 13 years of topics we've talked about. Mm -hmm. We haven't, I finally, after about five years or so, had to start writing them down. We haven't done aging in a while. I did that with Cab Merlot about six years ago. All so right. here we are, we're doing it with Syrah. We're talking about the Syrah as it ages, and hopefully you guys have these wines out. I would like you to taste them in order from youngest wine to oldest wine. So we've got our 19, 18, 14, and 13 lined up that we're going to talk about and share with you guys. All right, so get them all lined up. Hopefully you're um, with your friends and family, uh, maybe socially distanced for this year. Just consider us like the kids' table. And we're coming in, we're being beamed into your Thanksgiving uh, festivities just to provide color yeah and this is the 13th annual <laughs> and we're just calling this one the uh, pandemic the virtual pandemic special yeah uh, but it's gonna be a lot of fun we're focusing on Syrah mm -hmm. Syrah is one of the wines that we absolutely are in love with here in the Snake River Valley and the first one that we're gonna do is is gonna be well the barrel sample Yes. So, so let's get in. That's that's one's right here. This is 20. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, Sorry, it's cute. Okay. There's our cute little bottle. It's kind of like Peaky Blinders with the laudanum. You just kind of pull that out. <laughs> My opium sample bottle. Yeah, so this one did come straight out of the barrel into your sample bottle. Much like this right behind us. This is, this is an example of the wine that we just made. The one that's in your glass is a 2019, but it looks just like this because we happen to be standing in front of the exact same lot for this video. Ha, what a coincidence. Perfect. Thank you, Jamie, for rearranging the stacks. So this is a 2020 Syrah from Williamson Vineyard, and what's in your glass, pulled straight through a siphon, is the 2019 Syrah from Williamson. And it's just a one barrel sample. So that means that this is a simpler wine. It's a more singular representation of the wines. It, it's, it's kind of representative of what the barrels taste like before we blend them together. And by that, I mean that it's one vineyard, one barrel itself. Um, we can, let's go into detail about the barrel, one yeast, so on and so forth. So um, it's not gonna be as layered and nuanced as the next three wines you taste, but that's kind of the fun of it. Now they've got four ounce bottles at home of each of these samples. So let's start tasting this one the barrel sample and just putting my nose in that I'm getting a lot right away let's talk about um, this particular wine this particular barrel sample so what vineyard again so it's Williamson Vineyard out on the sunny slope we have um, multiple vineyards of almost all of our wines vineyard sources and so you're only tasting Ding one vineyard here, but when we move into the finished wines, you'll be tasting multiple vineyards together in a blend. Understood. So this is the Williamson Vineyard, Snake River Valley. Tell us a little bit about this vineyard. What does it look like? Where is the position? Tell us a little bit about the family too that grows for us. Yeah, the Williamsons are great. They've been growing fruit out in the sunny slope for more than a hundred years. They had their centennial anniversary a few years back and they have uh, sites all over the sunny slope. The site where this vineyard is grown, it's a south-facing, um, just gentle hillside that rolls down in the Snake River Valley. It has chalk hills up above it. Very picturesque, gets very warm. Um, just wonderful vineyard. We get a lot of Viognier from there too. Mm -hmm. We've been working with the Williamson since, I'd say our, possibly our second vintage. Yeah, something since like that, About 2000, time. 2008, great people. This always this vineyard always plays a, a critical role in our Syrah blend every year is that right 
Well, yeah, I enjoy this in our blend because I think it adds a lot of backbone. It, it tends to be one of the richer, thicker in terms of texture, one of the, the wines. And then some of the other wines that we'll talk about or we'll taste later, like the Sawtooth, it tends to be more aromatic. But so this is the one that I think of as being kind of the backbone of the blend. All right, so we've got the Williamson family. We've got 100 years of fruit growing uh, in the vineyard that we're tasting right now. Let's talk about the barrel that it sat in. Tell us a little bit about, about that and what we can pick up from that. Yeah, so it's a brand new barrel. It was the first time we'd use that barrel when this wine went into it. It's American oak. I use all American oak with my Syrah program because I feel like the American oaks, it's really aromatic and it has a soft touch on the tannins, which I find to be similar to Syrah. Syrah is such you know, gorgeous aromatics and not as tannic as something like a Cabernet. So I want to pair like with like when I look at my oak and my grape pair up. Um, and this is a medium plus toast, which means that the barrel, after it was made, the outside, it's set over an oak fire and it's toasted or and if it was whiskey, we'd call it charring, but we don't char with wine. Um, we just essentially caramelize it over the fire for a certain amount of time, the longer you caramelize it, the darker the flavors get that they impart into the wine. And the less uh, you caramelize it, the more they're sort of, mm, let's see, the oak kind of moves through a progression. It goes from creamy to things like maple syrup to things like pumpkin spices and then into the really rich flavors like coffee or chocolate. And a medium plus is like right in the middle. It's kind of the pumpkin spice level oh. of barrel. And that's perfect for Thanksgiving and for Syrahs. Mm -hmm. You seem to like the medium plus toast for your Syrahs, at least when it comes to Williamson and this one. And I just want to yeah. clarify something that's really uh, important. When we talk about the barrel and you talk about we toasting it, we're not actually doing the toasting of the barrels. We don't build these. That Those are our coopers. Yeah. Those are located in Napa Valley and in France. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially, when you look at these barrels, think of Melanie as the chef, the winemaker, she's the chef. And these are not only cooking vessels for you, these barrels but they're also a spice rack so when you speak of this toasting what's happening when the coopers the barrel makers heat those barrels when they toast them or for whiskey when they char them is that they're creating a sugar layer on the inside of that barrel is that right yeah kind of they're it's caramelizing the sugar that's in the veins we'll call them the xylem and phloem of the oak they're caramelizing the sugar that's in there and that sugar slowly seeps out into the wine. And much like a, an onion, since it's been caramelized, it's got all these rich flavors in it. Like think French onion soup, okay? That's the onion world, but the barrel world, you've got all these different levels of toasting which create these incredible, complex, rich flavors that seeps into the wine slowly through the years. So this sugar layer dissolves into the wine um, I would assume that the, you're saying that these are mostly first year barrels, so the, the impact of the wine is the greatest. Mm -hmm. um, well, in this, in this barrel sample, it is a first year barrel, so. It's so a lot of impact. Yeah. What is, so we know now, we know that the, the families, the Williamsons behind this, they're in the sunny slope. It's a southern facing vineyard. It's bringing some body, some richness to it. Then you're putting it in an American oak. That's a medium plus toast. Okay, it's dissolving these this sugar layer into the wine. What's happening to the wine? What is that sugar layer? What is that toast imparting to the wine? Well, a sense of sweetness, but it's a stable sense because there are long chain carbohydrates that are coming from the barrel into the wine and these other flavors like the pumpkin spice, the maple syrup, um, the little bit of espresso, all that stuff is dissolving into the wine, okay. making it more interesting, making it more layered. And the oak also has the um, side benefit or maybe it's the main benefit of helping the wine age better. It's so it ages longer if it's been treated in oak. You know, it's been aged in oak for two years. With Syrah, it's about a year and a half. 
then it goes into the bottle, but having all of that deliciousness of the oak dissolved into the wine will make the wine last longer in the bottle. That's so cool. So it's helping it's helping the wine age. Yeah. And and some of that's because the some of the things it's getting from the barrel are almost antioxidants. Yes, tannin from the barrel and there's tannin in the grapes as well. That's a big antioxidant. Um, and the because I try to eat a lot of antioxidants so I don't age hmm. and it's the same thing going on with the wine right yes <laughs> okay <laughs> same principles excellent I the, like it the color of the Syrah grape is helping the wine to age as well age well and by that I really mean preserve not age but preserve so the color is better um, it's stabilized by the presence of the new oak so there's something about the complexing of oak molecules and the color anthocyanin molecules of the wine ah. when they get together and form a bond they stay in solution longer okay. and so the wine stays darker richer and younger longer yeah and i'm just i'm just going to clarify that was anthocyanins cyanins cyanins so in case you're wondering guys you do get a uh, two credits on a biochemistry degree if you get all the way to the end of this video yeah. and you're still sober. Let's move on to the uh, 2018. One last question. Okay, go ahead. One last question. How long is this sit in barrel before you say, okay, I'm gonna get my other barrels and I'm gonna make my blend? Yeah, well, so the future of this exact wine you're tasting is that over the next month, I will finalize the blend uh, for the 2019, so I will, on in benchtop trials, I'll put all of the lots together, see how they taste together. I'll decide things like, are we gonna put a little bit of Moved in here or not? So some little minor tweaks. Then in January, we will pull all these wines, 46 barrels to be precise, into tanks together, get them all blended up together. Then we will filter them and put them into the bottle. So they'll be bottled by the end of January and they will be ready to drink by the end of March. So cool. So this is a component. Let's go on to the next wine. This is the 2018 Syrah. This is what we would call our current vintage. We're hoping that at the end of this tasting, you say, wow, I can really see the benefit of aging and you're going to want to buy at least four bottles of this and get a killer deal uh, on that. But this is the 2018 Syrah, and this is multiple vineyards, multiple barrels. Did you say 46, something like that, roughly? Well, yeah, roughly something like that. So over 46 four barrels of the 19, the 18 would have been similar. Similar. How many vineyards are in this one? So two vineyards in the 18, and then three vineyards in these two. And what so, are the two vineyards here? So we'll this one, we're, we're tasting Williamson again, plus the sawtooth. Vineyard. Okay, so this is really interesting. I, when I smell this one, it smells similar but different. Like I know this is a Syrah. I know that I'm not tasting say our Tempranillo or our Cab. It's, it's dark mm -hmm. fruit to me and some savory notes, but it's different already. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess that makes sense because there's a lot, there's a lot more lots as we call them, a lot more different barrels. Yeah, different I, batches of wine going into this. So I. I don't know about you guys, but to me, this wine seems a little smoother than the 19. And it's a little more mellow, really. And that's probably because you've got everything blended together now. So the oak percentage is lowered because in the final blend, we don't do all new barrels. The final mm. blend, um, well, it's a long story, but let's call it roughly 30% new wood. It's really like 20% brand new barrels, 20% second year barrels, 20% third year barrels. It becomes and so complicated on. math, but this is the holidays. <laughs> Don't make these people do math. That's not yeah. fair. So it's we too like long to say. Of a story, but we, like we, could, say, we could round it off and yeah. say it's 30% new oak, 70% neutral oak. Let's call it that. And I've been doing a lot of rounding with my eight year old at homeschooling during the pandemic. And so I, uh, I appreciate this mm. rounding. Rounding yeah. is, is what we're all about. This is the holidays. Let's round. 30% um, new, 70% neutral. What's a neutral mm. barrel? Well, we call them neutral once they've had wine in them three times already. So by the fourth use of that barrel, we call it neutral because pretty much all of those delicious flavors and that sense of sweetness that we were talking about, those are gone, oh. but we still use the barrel. So neutral is fancy for used. Used. 
I love it. It's a euphemism for an old used barrel. So um, the barrel doesn't really have that sugar layer anymore inside it. Right. But it's still. Yeah, like this is still a, like this, this is a good guy. one. This guy. Yeah. What? Twenty fifteen. This guy's this guy's yeah. a neutral barrel. Yeah. So still getting some oxygen in it. It's still um, aging. It's still changing a little bit, mellowing. Yep. And even the neutral barrels, they help preserve the wine more than say a stainless steel barrel. It's super weird. But if you age wines in stainless steel, old barrels, and new barrels, after, say, three months, you'll find that the brand new barrel has the best color, the neutral barrel has almost as good a color, and the stainless steel barrel, the colors dropped way down. We love the oak. Yeah, I mean, oak is, oak is really awesome. a magical thing. Plant an oak tree, old. people. Change the world. <laughs> okay, so uh, not just multiple vineyards, not just multiple types of barrels, right? You've got neutral barrels, you have new barrels. Are they all American, all the new barrels? Yes. Okay, so American oak. And that's just gonna be a through line through here, so we don't even need to talk about it it's again. It's all American. It's all American. It's all, American with it's all about 30% new, 70% neutral and all But of maybe there's some new other nuances. Maybe you've fermented them slightly different. Um, maybe you've used a different yeast. Oh, yeah. So you're really getting, you're, you're starting to layer in a whole bunch of different complexity. Definitely. If we have 40, 46 barrels, whatever it is of Syrah, that are going to go into our final blend, the objective is that by the time those wines are done aging, all 46 of those barrels taste subtly different because we've included multiple vineyards, multiple yeasts, different fermentation styles different barrels, uh, the toast levels are different in them, there are different coopers, all of those things combine together so that we have about 40-ish totally unique wines in these barrels, and then in the end they come together and create one wine, and that's, that's what the finished product is. This is definitely, you know, when I'm, when, if I jump back right now to the barrel sample, I really can tell the difference this this guy's got a kind of I taste the fruit in the beginning and then boom it's all oak to me. Mm -hmm. This guy here that's the blend. Yeah, there's some similarities, but definitely definitely different. Kind of a more much more integrated and, and complex. Yeah, it's a smoother, kind of rounder, gentler product. And then I I am so excited to move to this six year old wine and seven year old oh, yeah. wine. Hell yeah! And so for, library wines yes library you wanna, wines. you want to talk about the library really quick what are what's that mean what are we doing i don't want to talk you quickly to... about anything i'm taking my time it's the holidays people um let's let's go over to that one let's yeah. go over to the first go ahead guys if you haven't already rushed ahead of us which i'm is sure totally everybody fine. has but it's all right it's okay cheers cheers uh oh wait yep okay 2014 Happy time machine we're already in a time machine now. 2014. Do you remember 2014? Yes. I do because sort of. well, our son was born. My son Rowan was born. And it was an amazing vintage. I'm if you guys have tasted this already, it's big, it's rich, it's totally delicious. At 6 years old, it's kind of in my prime, what I consider to be like the prime middle age of a wine. Somewhere between 5 and 10 years is when our red wines taste so good. They've had enough time to really uh, get the start to get the complexities the aging lends itself so this wine should taste more nuanced and have some subtly different flavors than the previous wine and that's because within a glass of wine you have all these different molecules a whole bunch of them like they estimate like 600 plus different molecules within a single bottle of, or glass of wine the molecules are bumping around into each other as they age and every once in a while they recombine. When two smaller molecules that taste like one thing and another, they recombine, they taste like a third thing. So you're actually getting new flavors evolving as the wine ages and it mellows out the tannins with age so the wine's kind of softened around the edges. And so these two wines I think are just a great display of like what you want to do with your cellar. Mm. Put a few bottles down mark them for five years, start drinking them after five years. I mean, you can always check in on them through the years, mm. but I think five to 10 is just brilliant. You know what I'm, I'm thinking about is the song where they say, she blinded me with science. 
that was that was awesome. That was okay. good information. Um, okay, let's go back to the library wines. Whole concept, right? We've been sold out of these wines mm. for years, but we stashed some away, and now we're reselling them. They're available on our website. We've mm -hmm. aged them perfectly, so on their side, nice and cool, just enough humidity so that nothing dries out, the, the cork doesn't dry out, the wines are preserved really well. So these are bottle aged and versus the aging that took place in the barrel before we before we bottled them. Mm, but people like to ask me what the difference between that is. Uh-oh. So when wines are aging in barrel, it's pretty rapid aging because the barrel is so porous to oxygen. Once we put them in the bottle, that aging slows way down. There is a tiny bit of oxygen exchange through a natural cork, but um, for the most part, that's really slow. And once they go into the bottle, they're almost um, free from the frozen influence of time. oxygen. Yeah, almost but, frozen. But in they time. will continue to evolve because that whole process that I blinded you with there with the yeah you know the molecules and they're bouncing and all around that they're stuff. aging whether or not oxygen gets in there they're aging it could be a screw yeah. cap and it would still age because it would be bouncing up against it and it would be it would be an awesome wine later on yeah um all right um we're so happy if you're curious if you want to buy an older vintage check out our website but and um and grab a bottle maybe you're missing um a year in there from tempranillo or Syrah or the valentina or bordeaux blend and you want to fill that missing vintage in a vertical that's what the website's for that's what our wine club uh, liaisons are for so call us we, we can dig through our library and we th i think we have almost every vintage available for sale which is really fun but also it's the whole idea think about this think about taking this 18 and aging it a few years boom you've got something like this which is really different I mean I'm mm -hmm. I think the 18 is gonna age like the 13 just saying the reason I say that is oh. because the 14 is Secret a insight. really big wine and the 13 is a smoother wine and so Depending on your personal taste, you might like the 13 or the 14 better, but um, the, no, I want to go to the, no, the I want 18 to go to the is starting out a really smooth wine, and so I think it will evolve in a similar pattern to the 13. So one of the things that I think is so interesting about these four wines is that you can taste the differences between them, but they are fairly subtle. The overall characteristic of Snake River Valley Syrah is really strong in all four examples, I think. You've got super rich, dark berry, almost like berry compote. You've got little hints of meatiness, savoriness. Um, these all taste pretty subtle to me on the smoke, which they get from a little bit of uh, heavily toasted barrels, but it's there in a subtle way. And all four of these vintages that we're showing you, they're all average Snake River Valley vintages, which is a good thing. So wait a second, average vintages. Tell us, tell us a little bit about Snake River Valley, because you, when we talk often about these wines, we talk about the consistency of the Snake River Valley. I think a lot of people might be uh, familiar with, well, this Napa Valley had this vintage was amazing, or especially in some European regions, they say, well, this vintage is the one that you need to get. It's, mm -hmm. And it costs three times as much as this other vintage. What's going on there? Because really one of the things that we talk about here with Cinder, with the Snake River Valley, is consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the strong points about growing wine in a continental climate. Otherwise, uh, you might call it just like what we have here is a high elevation, uh, arid climate. It means that you get more consistent vintages. Since you're farther away from the ocean, you don't have years that are really cold versus years that are really hot, depending on what the ocean climate's doing. We're in a rain shadow here. The Cascades and the Rockies block that ocean weather. So we have consistently dry, warm summers, and that leads to really consistent wine vintages. So even though it's fun to taste all these different nuances, you don't have to get super worried about, oh, should I buy Snake River Valley in 2019 versus 2018 or 20? Because for the most part, we have really, really consistent years. That sounds like something we should toast. Yeah, sure. Let's toast uh, Snake River Valley weather. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>
places like um, Bordeaux, right up on the coast, going to have much more influence and variation vintage to vintage. Yeah, or Willamette Valley is another mm -hmm. good example here in the States where you just have, depending on whether it's La Nina or El Nino, that sort of thing, you, you can have really dramatic differences in the weather. And that is pretty awesome because what that does is gives you confidence to really age any, any vintage that you might have access to, get three or four, five bottles of it and hide them from yourself, right? That's what I, that's basically what aging yeah. is, is figure out who drinks more, you or your wife, and then hide it from that person somewhere downstairs um, and then have your everyday wine you can consume and know that, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open that uh, Cinder Syrah in two or three years, it's gonna be a real different animal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we have taken a lot of the the time of these wonderful people, um, and you know you can only spend a little bit of time during the holidays at the kids' table, and that's what this is. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Hopefully, they've seen some of the nuances. I definitely have seen the integration of the wines as they age. Hopefully, you're excited to maybe get some of the current wine and age it. And we have a we have a great deal going for all the people that participated in this. Uh, check that out. It's uh, in the insert there, four bottles, and you, you get a nice uh, gift card to Cinder as well. Um, mm -hmm. One last thing I want to say. Happy holidays. Thanks for your support. This has been a crazy year. Uh, check out our website, our social media platforms. But for the locals here, uh, one, of the, one of my favorite things is started this weekend, and that's our annual toy drive that benefits the Boys and Girls Club. And we would really, really love to see a tremendous um, participation in that. And it's already started here, which is great to see. This has been a tough year for a lot of little ones, and we want to make sure there's something under their tree. So bring an unwrapped, age-appropriate gift for kids 5 to 18 to the winery, and we will give you a certificate for a complimentary glass of red wine that you can enjoy it anytime at your leisure here in the tasting room. It's super fun, it's a great cause, um, and we would be really pleased to see you uh, drop off a gift. Mm, yes, and I wanna say, I'm sorry I missed you guys in person this year, I've gotten used to, and you guys I think have gotten used to my little lectures after Thanksgiving, but thank you so much for joining us for our virtual barrel tasting and lecture. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, cheers. Cheers, love from the kids' table.